So hi guys, this is CGTN reporter Chen Ziyuan in Bandung, and I want to share with you I'm on a very uh, crowded and busy street here. Crowded mean traffic because this is the fourth largest city um, in Indonesia. And let's take a round look at. I want to show you what their major transportation is. You can see motorcycle going behind me. You get that traffic one time. And also you can see in the front row of the traffic there are so many motorcycles. So during this, this live streaming, you can hear. This loud engine passing me. It's just because this is how they uh, transport in the city. So just bear with us because it can be loud from time to time as cars are passing behind us. So, um, so the, I want to share with you the street that we are currently on is the Asia Africa Street. The reason why we show you the little video um, earlier is because that. Um, this street actually demonstrate um, the Bandung spirit. Why is that? Because lots of Asian and African leaders march along the street. You can hear how loud this is. Uh, just because I'm talking at the same time, you can see the engine and also motorcycle passing so fast right beside me. So this is the main street. Just because, in, um, first of all, it's the historical meaning for the Asia, Asian and African conference that. Uh, took place here during the years. The very first one, well-known one, is in 1955. That was uh, the footage that you saw that uh, Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai was here to give a speech and also inspire a lot of Asian and African countries at that time to fight against colon colonialism and also um, anti-imperialism. So we keep going here, um, but I want to share with you that you might see a little stone right beside me as we uh, go past here. This one doesn't have a flag on, but um, on the other side, it will show the uh, name of the country here that uh, my cameraman is going to give you a closer look. Um, in addition to that, there are 29 countries that participated in the first conference. So um, this is, these are the names of the country that we'll definitely see one with China's flag on. But as we go along here, alongside here, there are many museums. You can see pink tourist bats uh, passing behind me. So a lot of activities going on. What, why people are here is actually have a historical context on what Bandung really means at that time and also what Bandung spirit really mean in the context nowadays. As we know that this year's G20 summit will take place in uh, Bali as world leaders will be gathering in Bali in the next few days. So the reason why we are revisiting Bandung here is to really get a sense of what this, is, this city is about because we know Bandung is not only known for its Bandung series, but the upcoming Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway will be up and running in June of 2023. So a lot of things happening on the ground here in the city. Meanwhile, um, you can see the building here and also decoration in gold and white, giving a really strong sense. Um, coming up on my right hand side, I believe this is a provincial museum showcasing um, there, there is like a little tractor showing on their front gate. Really, so this is the street that is the main street of the city of Bandung in the center of the city. And also a lot of historical mixed element here, including colonial element. And also uh, we are going to show you the hotel that uh, Premier and also world leaders stays in um, during those uh, special times. And as we are approaching here, it's the Savoy Hoff, Hoffman um, Hotel that's coming up. So what I want to share with you is that um, the Bandung Walk is a historical walk, and they pretty much do that um, as uh, 
commemorate action to really show that the agreement that reached among Asian and also African countries during that period of time, and also carry out that legacy during uh, as the world is facing different challenges. So one of the major outcome of the abundance three is definitely. Uh, the, uh, the final communique that reached in 1955, and also the 10 principles of Bandung. There are so many things that we're going to dive into, but I just want to give you a vibe that it's a busy city, and you can pretty much get a taste of um, historical context, because um, especially Bandung has a lot of a Dutch element, um, because it was uh, colonized by Netherlands before. So a lot of buildings that we see, and also decoration uh, has a lot of mixed element of Indonesian as well as Dutch and I'm going to bring your attention to my left hand side now the camera is pointing over here so it's the Hotel Savoy Homan so um, this is a hotel that the world leaders stay at uh, during the 19, 1955 Asian African conference so i think they actually say that uh premier john light stay on the third floor and also our chinese president xi jinping and also world leader stay here during the 2015 uh, uh, six, uh 2015 uh, when they come here for the 60th anniversary of the conference so this is the historical hotel and what i want to share with you is that so the historical walk is actually begins in front of the hotel down to the independence of uh, independence hall where, where they have the conference it, it's a short walk as we move along here however this is this is what you just saw at the beginning so Joe and Light actually walked from here to the conference site and also President Xi Jinping and also Indonesian President Widodo was and also other Asian and African leaders actually marched from the hotel during the 60th anniversary of the Asian African Conference toward that uh, conference site is to just showcase the unity of how Asian and African people are working together to face global challenges and also carry on that spirit that uh, because at that time um, and, and let me pass through here because this is the entrance and so many motorcycles are, are coming coming here but I'm going to stop here to give you a little historical context is why we're why we are doing this so when Chinese Premier uh, Zhou Enlai trying to flew here to attend a conference um, there were attempts of assassination and because the schedule changed and uh, Premier Zhou left earlier for a conference um, the his original scheduled flight uh, actually crashed and 11 people have died in that incident. So there are a lot of difficulty as Premier Zhou trying to attend this uh, Bandon Conference, which is also known as the Asian African Conference here. So, and then after he arrived here, there are a lot of achievements in terms of uh, diplomatic ties uh, China has developed with other countries, as well as the five principles of uh, peaceful coexistence that he delivered here at the at the Bandon Conference that inspired so many people and also Asian and African countries. Because that was with the backdrop of World War II has just finished, and then uh, not not just finished. Let me correct myself. With with the backdrop of World War II, and also that was. Uh, of relationship and conflict between Soviet Union and the United States. So by that time, all the Asian African, most of the Asian and, and African countries are still fighting against colonialism. So this is why this place is so important. And given the context that now uh, the G20 is going to open in the next few days in, in Bali. So what the, what the spirit has carried on, especially in nowadays, it's really important to help us understand how China is handling its relationship with the world and also how they are carrying that on and inspire other countries in the region. And let's keep walking. Yeah. And as you can see, there are historical displacement here. And I think this is like somewhat a printing machine. I didn't find that out because there is no signs here. 
Um, you can, a power play is really a printing machine with a letter O here. It's kind of interesting here because you can see such a historical uh, location had so many modern elements like it's there is a bank on my right hand side and then also uh, we have see some uh, convenience store with western ban uh, western brand uh, being stationed here inside so it's a mix of modern and tradition and the building also gives a different vibe and while it's weekend here we can see a lot more people on the streets than we come here in the past few days because um, I think people take time to really treasure what this place has to offer. Um, however, as, as, uh, so the conference site has now turned into a museum. And I want to explain that we didn't get a chance to go inside because the conference hall is under renovation. So we are giving you an external look of how this everything comes along. So. Remember that I just pointed out at the entrance and then to the point that we are in here, we are only like walk about 50 meters, but uh, but that's part of the historical walk of the Asian African Conference. And as people, as people are traveling here as just a daily routine, but given that historical context, it's very interesting to see how people embedded this historical meaning in their daily life. You can see people are taking photos here. So I'm um, asking my camera to give a closer look at this building that gives you a different vibe. So this is a convenience store um, owned by the Dutch guy. Um, I don't really recall the name, but I've done a little research. So he actually sells a lot of Western product like cigars and, and um, other like coffee beans and, and tea leaves here. Um, it was owned by bank before, but I'm not sure what's the business or an enterprises inside. But this building has remained. So um, it's also like in the center of the city that when people drive toward the Asia Africa street, they can see this building and re it's kind of reminded that that period exists, but life has to move on even though the building it has served in different functions. So we're crossing streets now, you can see a group of families in front of us. sign here already so uh, this is the historical site of the Independence Hall which is also now the Museum of the Asian African Conference and you can see people are chilling inside because it's under renovation here and we're taking you on this site to give you a different look of how this what the street is all about so that pretty much completed so I asked my camera to give you a pan of the distance uh, between the hotel and and the mu and the museum. So the walk is just about 100 meter, not not much. It's a very close walk, but this walk has shown the great friendship between Asian and African people as world leaders has walked here. And also, I believe many reports have uh, said that President Widodo has made it become a tradition. And we are walking over here to give you another look of um, a traditional theater in, in Bandung here. It's for small performances because the size of the building doesn't allow it to carry out huge performance. But you can see really traditional elements here. And you can see a huge crowd of people 
are gathering here during the weekend as to enjoy a little stroll here um, with beautiful decoration because there aren't that many uh, places to hang out during the weekend here in, in the city of Guangdong. So we are giving you a, a quick look of this is the library of the museum. And this is a view of the street that we are that you will so we actually come from this street towards the uh, uh, Asia Africa street so this is this place decorated with um, golden gates as well as like an external decoration I'm trying to find my cameraman here so this is uh, this, this is the little theater that they have, and also a huge explanation here in Indonesian, which I cannot read. But this is the traditional theater, and you can see. I think this is a machine to play movies. It's closed during the weekend, so <laughs> we are peeking inside through the gate. So now we are on this side. So this, we are now on this side of the street and you can see the Dutch building is on my right hand side behind us. Um, we just came from my the other direction with the hotel and then uh, the museum is on my left hand side, which is on your right. So, not a long distance, but a lot of historical things happen here. So, no, so normally um, when when it's all in decoration you should see the flag of the 29 countries here however it's all gone it's, it's quiet here as I just mentioned the museum is under renovation so I want my camera to give you an outside look. Maybe we need to cross over to the street. I want to give them a full view. We're going to the So you can see like banks and also shops along here. But we are giving you a look of what the street really looks like. And the museum. So this is the museum. So this is the staff entrance and then we will take you around to where the big entrance is as when they gather for world meetings. Okay. So um, since we're in front of the museum, the road is so narrow that I have to watch out for my cameraman because the motorcycle is passing behind him so fast. So I need to uh, tell him what to shoot at, and at the same time, look, and then pay attention to the motorcycles around us. So uh, this is the museum and um, well, I'm going to meet with the head of the museum tomorrow. But today, what I want to, want to share with you is that um, some of the importance of this location is obviously they collect everything uh, from 1955 since the, the conference uh, was held uh, to this point including when world leaders come here and also all the historical shots and meaning on what the conferences really bring to the world and also 
in terms of its relationship between Asian and African countries. So um, there are pretty much shots of those historical moments inside, and also they pretty much recreate what happened, um, the scene of uh, speech delivery at the very, very first Asian African conference. And uh, some of the major achievements that reached at the first conferences especially included the abundance spirit, which included lots of aspects. But w what really inspired from the Chinese perspective is uh, the speech deal by Premier Zhou Enlai on the five principles of coexistence, which means there is no interference um, in others' external, uh, external affairs, including respect, uh, mutual respect and equality, and also respect others' territory and integrity. So a lot of these basic principles actually had this meeting in today's world. As we know, the current world is in not chaos, but frequent changes of world challenges, including that the, the we know that uh, Russia and Ukraine conflicts, as well as um, also the upcoming meeting between the, the head of states between China and the U.S. So a lot of things to look out to for us to really give a relook, a review at what Bundang Spirit and also the Bundang Conference has offered here. So you can see signs here again saying G20. We are actually at the front entrance of the, the museum. Um, it's all fenced up, but my cameraman is trying to give you a sneak peek um, up toward the front gate, front gate of uh, the museum. So this is where the world leaders and also attendants march into the conference hall from this point. 等会再再从那个再看摇到酒店一下 so, so remember we come from the, the grayish building on the right hand side is as we now slowly zoom in again you can see how heavy the traffic is and then the walk from hotel to where we are standing right now is the historical uh, walk of the world leader as they normally do to commemorate the spirit of Asian African conference.
crossing the street here in Indonesia is quite challenging. Oh man, oh. Um, yeah, with the fast speed of one second. Okay, we made it. So, we are about to wrap up our live stream here, but I still want to give you a nicer shot of the front gate of the museum. Here's a look of it. So we are wrapping up our live stream here in Bandung. I know this is not a long one, but um, a few things I keep re repeating and I also want you to take it away is, uh, first of all, the historical walk is something that you don't really feel in, in your day-to-day -day life, but um, this, this street actually symbolizes uh, how people are coming together, especially Asian and African country, come together to really work together and help to face your challenges, uh, especially under the pressure of colonialism and also imperialism. And then the second a major achievement that has made, especially um, delivered by Premier Zhou Enlai, is that the five principles of coexistence. Um, I think the G20 is also having major developed countries and the emerging economies around the world come together with collectively and collaborate to face global challenges and this is something that underlines in the bundle spirits and and we hope that all countries can come together and work together to face global challenges especially the world now recover under the impact of COVID-19 pandemics so I will leave you here but make sure to check check back and also stay tuned on CGTN for more coverage on G20 coming live from uh, Bali to you with my colleagues here on the ground. And I'm Sun Zuyuan for CGTN in Bandung. Bye for now.